Australia. Australia. What is the first thing that comes into your mind when you think of Australia? For me, I think of all the wildlife that lives in Australia and are free to roam wherever they choose in our vast land. But have you ever thought that some animals are or were per hunted ruthlessly because they were pests? Well, it's true. These things do happen and cause animals to go into extinction. But has one ever thought of reversing the effects of extinction? Bringing an animal back to life? Because of science and new technology, it is possible to clone animals from DNA cells. But has science gone too far by playing God? Australia is home to over 1 million species of animals, many of them unique and endangered. While we know many examples of extinct animals, there is one that remains in the minds of Australians and of those around the world. I am talking about the Tasmanian tiger, or the last sign, a carnivorous marsupial which was eradicated from the face of the earth in the 1930s. Despite its fame, it is one of the least understood of Tasmania's native animals. The Tasmanian tiger's scientific name gives away its basic description. Thylacinus cynocephalus. It means pouch dog with the wolf's head. The thylacine looked like a cross breed between a wolf, a tiger, a hyena, and a fox. Like other marsupials, it had a pouch in which it carried its young, just like the renowned kangaroo. The thylacine looked like a long, slim dog with a big head. When fully grown, it measured about 2 meters from nose to tail, stood 2 feet off the ground, and weighed about 30 kilograms. An intriguing characteristic of this animal was that it had a series of about 20 dark vertical stripes down its back and tail, similar to those on the zebras. The thylacine fed on small animals such as wallabies and did most of its hunting at night. Its favorite habitat was open forests and grasslands across Australia and New Guinea until several thousand years ago, when it became confined to the island of Tasmania. By the time the Europeans arrived in Australia, the introduction of the dingo brought in by the aboriginals had already eliminated the thalassine from the mainland. Settlers who lived on the island did not appreciate the introduction of this new predator which posed a threat to the livestock, mostly sheep herds. So a bounty was put on the animal, which led to the thalassine's extinction. In 1888, Tasmanian Parliament placed a price of one pound on each thylacine's head. By the time the government terminated its bounty scheme in 1909, 2,184 bounties had been paid. By 1910, the last signs were considered a rare species, so it was sought by zoos around the world. On September 7, 1936, was the last year where Benjamin, the world's last captive thylacine, died in Tasmania's Hobart Zoo. That same year, the Tasmanian tiger was added to the list of protected wildlife. By 1986, the thylacine was declared extinct by international standards. To be considered extinct, an animal must not be in any human presence for 50 years. The process to clone a Tasmanian tiger is a very difficult one. Firstly, the team of scientists fronting the project must collect a feasible amount of DNA from a Tasmanian tiger specimen. Another difficulty for the scientists is that they have to make the dead DNA act like living DNA. To do this, the DNA will be extracted and multiplied by using yeast or bacteria cells. They must then analyze it and genetically map it. They must then implant the DNA in an embryo of a member of the same family as the Tasmanian tiger. A suitable match could be the Tasmanian devil. After the scientists would have to wait for to see if it worked. Now that I explained the process, I would like to talk about what really happened for the Tasmanian tiger. To find a proper specimen to extract DNA from was the first thing that the scientists had to overcome. In 2002, scientists discovered the fetus of a female Tasmanian tiger stored in an alcohol jar. The fetus had been developing for more four months until the mother died. The specimen was stored from 1866 in a glass jar filled with alcohol. Luckily, the alcohol preserved the DNA. The scientists had 30 minutes to extract the tissue from the Tasmanian tiger or else the DNA specimens would be lost. To extract the best DNA, they took tissue samples from the kidneys, liver, and heart because they were the most protected. The scientists successfully sequenced 
part of the DNA. Sadly, in 2005, the scientists heading the project told the public that they needed to cancel the project because the DNA ex extracted would not suffice to fully sequence the Tasmanian tiger's DNA to be able to clone it. As with many techniques and procedures in science, the cloning of the Tasmanian tiger is very controversial. Cloning in general has always been controversial, and this case is not different. The science community and wildlife communities think that bringing back the Tasmanian tiger will not work and is a waste of time that could be better spent on something else. Wildlife advocates believe that if people see that animals can be brought back from extinction, they will disregard current animal life. Scientists believe that the ecosystem in which the Tasmanian tiger lived in have adopted drastically to its disappearance and that reintroducing them might hurt other wildlife that have adopted to its absence. But the scientists that are trying to clone the Tasmanian tiger say that it will rebalance the ecosystem to where it was before the arrival of European settlers in Tasmania. Most of the residents of Tasmania are okay with the idea of the Tasmanian tiger coming back, but residents that live in the remote areas in forests are scared that the Tasmanian tiger might be another threat that they may face in their daily lives. The last complaint that hinders on the minds of wildlife advocates is that there is very little space for the Tasmanian tiger's habitat due to logging forests, fires, and the growing population in Tasmania. The story of the Tasmanian tiger is a very sad one. The discovery of the fetus bring a lot of hope for cloning and the reintroduction of the Tasmanian tiger into the wild. It was very disappointing that scientists weren't able to clone the Tasmanian tiger. All we can hope for now is that new technology brings us better tools to sequence the DNA of the Tasmanian tiger so that it can be cloned. We miss you, Tasmanian Tiger. <laughs>